Today we are speaking with Jerry Zarnecki, better known as the leadership czar in the business world. Jerry has just written his fourth book called Lead with Love, due to publish April 2010. And he's here today to talk about the very relevant questions about leadership and love in the workplace. Good morning, Jerry. Thanks for being here. Morning. Now, of course, you know that if you're coming on our show as a guest, we're going to Google you, right? We're going to do our background research. <laughs> so I did that. And you are really known as a, um, a tough guy, I would guess, in the business world. You're known for downsizing and coming in and being a change agent. So if you're known for that, how does that go along with your theme of leading with love? Fits perfectly because you can't downsize if you don't love the people you're downsizing. Oh. Otherwise, you become more than a hatchet man. You become a hater and you can't be effective when you, are, when you are making organizations more efficient. They have to be made efficient by caring about the people who remain. That's the people who matter the most. Now, speaking of the book, I, I read this book last night. It's a, it's a great read, but I noticed on the back cover here, I'm holding it up, you've got two different endorsements. Uh, Wayne Huizinga and uh, Mark Victor Hansen. Now, those are two very different people in the business world, two very different personalities. That's pretty interesting that you have an endorsement from both of them. What do you think this says? Well, I think it says that the, the book is bookended <laughs> by, by, on one hand, a touchy-feely guy who writes a thing called the chicken soup for the soul, mm -hmm. and on the other hand, a hard-nosed businessman who started three public companies. And I think that's what the book is all about. The book is all about the fact that you can care about human beings and be successful in, in, in your responsibilities as a leader. That's, for me, that's what the book is all about, is on uh, both ends of that spectrum need to identify with my message. I was drawn by the fact that you chose the word love mm -hmm. and not the word like. It's much easier to use the word like, but yet you chose a pretty big word. Actually, I feel very strongly about the fact that like is the wrong word. Why? As a matter of fact, every time that somebody in a workplace likes the people who work for them, that invariably makes them biased for those people. As a matter of fact, if you take the other side, every time somebody dislikes the people who work for them, they have a tendency to be biased against them. And what I want is people to love them as human beings so that they don't have the bias of liking or disliking but have the strong bias of saying they matter as human beings. And that everything that you do as a leader is dependent on the fact that it's the human being that you should care about, not whether you like them or not. That's definitely a big difference. So what do you think, uh, that message of course, I think makes this book different than probably any other book that you would read on leadership. What in your mind, when you were writing this book, do you think would draw readers to this? Why should they read this? The fact that love is on the, on the cover is something that really doesn't square with what most people think a business or leadership book should be all about. Right. Everybody, as a matter of fact, would say love in the workplace is the wrong thing. And I say love in the workplace is exactly the right thing. I was drawn to the last chapter. It's titled Passion. Talk to me about that last chapter. Actually, I talked about bookends earlier. That's a, the bookend of the book. Everything starts with love and ends with passion, in my opinion. The beginning maybe love, but the thing that really brings us to a conclusion, the thing that makes a difference in everything that we do is the passion. I love passion because when people are passionate, I don't have to, I don't have to tell them what to do. Yeah. They feel it inside. It's in and them. so for me, the, when the leader has passion for what he or she is doing, that will drive them. It takes them way beyond what any expectations may have been by the company or the, or the organization they work for. Now, this book, obviously, we're talking about leading. I mean, it's in the title, Lead with Love. A lot of people who are watching this morning maybe aren't in a position where they're leading a lot of people, but they're in a position where they have a boss. So what, what, how would they benefit from reading this? You know, when I, it's really kind of funny because after we named the book and after we got the, the book cover done, I realized that the book says lead with love, but you can read it another way. It can be led with love. Led with mm -hmm. Same word. I noticed that. Two different yes. meanings. And so what it really says is, this is the way you should expect to be led. And so in my opinion, everybody who reads this book should either look at it from, this is my job as a leader, or this is his job as a leader. What can I expect of him or her? What can I expect them to be? And frankly, if they don't perform according to that, 
I think they ought to find a new boss. Oh, so you can hold your boss accountable. You're darn right. Go by the checklist. You bet. Jerry, thank you so much. This was really great. Yeah, some really, really great advice. And if you want to grab the book, Lead with Love or Led with Love, whether you are a boss or an employee, it's something that you should get. You can check out the website, which is jerryzarnecki.com. Be sure must to grab it. Must read, must read. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks for being here. Thank, thank you. you. Really great.